Father, we're coming to celebrate this beautiful new day for so many of us. It doesn't matter what time it is. It's always new when you come to serve us with this beautiful, beautiful buffet where we're coming to you to be fed with your word, where we're coming to be renewed all the time, where our spirit gets strengthened and our minds get renewed with your love and with your word. Jesus, we want to glorify you and magnify you because you not only gave your life for us and thought that you are the true wine, but your mission was always to reconnect us with the Father. And you told us that he is the real one in authority. He is the real one that we have to bow to. He's the real gardener. And when he comes to prune us, he's always with the intention of having us producing and bearing an excellent fruit. Holy Spirit, we know you're interceding for us. We know you're setting us apart. We know you're sanctifying us. You're the one who's putting the thoughts in our mind, the thoughts in our heart, the words in our mouth. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you because these last sessions have been amazing and it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we have been able to have the understanding that we have now. We have been able to get to where we are right now and we're thirsty for more. We're thirsty for more. Thank you, Jesus, because no matter what kind of opposition comes against us, you always take us through the true path so that we can come, as we're doing right now, to keep seeding, to keep distributing your seeds so that these seeds go forth and bring the fruits in others and we transform darkness to light. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So yesterday, Papa, you started talking about uh, fruit salad trees. CJ was the one who put the, the, the name of the tree that you were talking about. So yeah. she said that fruit salad trees grow up um six different types of fruit and uh, they they all grow together they are multi-grafted trees uh, with different fruits but the same family grafted together in one tree and i only saying that because there was a question related to that right like and you you clarify that it's always the same family different varieties but the same family and when not they although, although not necessary it can okay. be different different even it can be even flowering trees plants oh, beautiful. whatever branch not necessary wow. it has to be of the same uh the 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 truth is the main stem will supply the nutrition to the branch that is being grafted now what is very important is the branch that is grafted is not a young branch it is a matured branch. So when you take a small piece, it can be a piece of only one inch in length or two inches in length. But that branch is already matured because the tree might be, say, five years old. Right. So when the tree is five years old, every portion of the tree is matured to five years. Yes. Even though the new branch is formed, but the maturity in that branch is of a five year. So when you take that small piece of a branch, five year, and you plant it into that stem, that branch is still matured and therefore it bears fruit as it grows. That's why you see small branches having oranges, whatever, yeah. fruit. Yes. Because it's it's taken from a mature plant. Right. So you don't have to wait for five years to bear fruit. And right. therefore, any branch that is taken and put into the main stem 
the purpose of the stem is to supply the sap on the purpose of the branch is to bear fruit and that is why jesus is the main true vine we are all the branches okay yes and because he supplies us the sap of heaven now we the branches have now begin to bear the fruit that is heavenly and not earthly Amen. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you for a clarification. That's why, that's why in this, the family can be good people, murderers, drunkards, drug addicts, prostitutes. All are included in the family when they are in Christ Jesus. So these branches who were once upon a time captivated by Satan and producing the fruit of the kingdom of darkness are no longer producing those fruit because now becoming now that they have become a new creature okay sin has been uprooted out from the root and a new nature of christ has been implanted in the person because this person is now grafted into christ and therefore have now the now this branch is a partaker of God's divine nature. And because of the God's divine nature, the fruit that is now bearing on the same branch is heavenly, and that is called as a new creature. That is called as a new creation. Because the nature has changed. The first Adam nature is crucified on the cross, and the resurrection of the second Adam that is Christ, along with him, we too have got resurrection and newness of life with a new heart, new spirit. And that's why I must understand that this is the work of God, not my work, purely God's work, who has changed the old sinful nature into godly nature. And therefore we produce fruit, not because we are working hard to produce fruit, but now because it's a new nature that has changed us inside out, and therefore the new fruit is, is, is coming because the nature has changed. That's what we'll study today, the character of a believer. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Papa. Thank you about that. Um, so yeah, as you were saying the same thing that you were you were saying right now is that uh, what happened is that when uh, you took the example of the the branches um, of of anyone who's participating on the platform right, right now with DCLM, you said that we all we all the participants are now branches because we're grafted into Jesus, just exactly what you said right now. And the best part of knowing that is that Jesus says that he's never tired of supplying the sap and he will never reject any any branch. What you just said, right? That that he's not gonna reject it because you were a murderer or a prostitute, but he's gonna allow you to be grafted into him and now you're gonna produce a different fruits. Um, so when we get to understand that right now, I don't care about having my own work, but I care about finding the, the, the true source. When I know the source, which is Jesus, then at that point I can say that I'm no longer want to live my life for myself. And I want to live my life for, for Jesus because the sap that he is supplying me has converted me. And now the, the, this sap that is supply, being supplied to me with that sap and that food, then I, I can produce a fruit. And when anyone goes uh, back, comes uh, through and picks the fruit, you said yesterday something beautiful that it can recognize, whoever picks that fruit can recognize this is not any ordinary fruit. This is godly fruit. This is a divine fruit. It's the fruit of Jesus. 
And this is the Christian life for us now, when we say, I no longer want to live my life for myself, but I live my life for you, Jesus. And every day new branches are being grafted into the same wine. When the person starts feeding on this sap that comes from the word of God, we now, who were upon a time dying or our leaves were withering, now that we're connected to the source, we find that we're wanting to get more and more of that food, more of that new revelation. And when we're connected now to the Holy Spirit, he makes us strong. And then we start experiencing things in our life that we never, never, never experienced before. And that's the reason why we can experience these supernatural things uh, is because we're connected to the true wine. When we were living in our senses before, we were living a defeated life. So whoever comes and gets connected to Jesus, the difference in their life is so undeniable that that's why I'm, today I'm saying, I don't want to live my life by my own because I know, I know I was withering away. But that now that I'm being grafted into you and you have accepted me to be, be in you, I can see that the fruit is different. And this fruit that Jesus is giving me is pure love. So when you get connected to the Holy Spirit, when he gives, um, when I give up my own agenda, now I'm asking Jesus, please, love of mine, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do for you. How do I raise my children? How do I have a fantastic married life? How do I feed your lamb? And you, you brother, you made a... Um, a commentary yesterday that we need to understand that we are not to suck the sap from another branch. Jesus is the true wine, and we just said that he never gets tired of giving us this sap, and this true wine is infinite, no matter how much sap he gives me. It never, never stops, but I cannot try and get that sap from another branch because that will disqualify me. That's not the right system. I will end up by receiving poison. And that's why there should not and there must not be any beating between the fellow branches, but only abiding to Christ. And then in here, you gave us a couple of analogies. And the first one, beautiful one, was the analogy of the cow. And you said that you saw a calf being born and someone came along and milked the, the mom, the, the cow, and kept a little bit of the milk. And you said, you asked, don't you realize that that, that milk was not meant to be for us? But the cow produces so much milk that there is more than enough for the calf and to share with us. The sap that you produce when you're connected into Jesus, when we're grafted into Jesus, or and the, the sap that Jesus produces is so abundant that it can quench the thirst of all mankind. And it, there will still be more. It won't stop. The second analogy you gave us is the wine. The wine being a creeper type of plant. And you said that because you said that there, every day there are more branches being added because the nature of the of the vine that is a creeper. So it cannot stand on his own. It needs support. And that's why Jesus says, even though I am the true wine, I am humbling myself so that you can come and work with me. And the branches, you said yesterday that they usually don't have any particular direction or shape. They can go up or down, east, south, or west. And that meant that you can be in any place today in a totally different place tomorrow. But wherever we go, we must be connected to the true wine so that you keep receiving that sap. You also gave us the example of the trees that are outside. And the tree, for example, here in Canada will said to me, look at me, you are all cozy in your house and I'm out here all in the open and the snow is trying to kill me, but God 
who created me has put so much of sap in me that I can withstand all this, all of this pressure. It can take my leaves away. It might look like I'm dying, but seasons are bound to change. When the seasons change, I will be back with all my leaves and I will bear fruit. So no snow, no rain, no wind will stop me from bearing this fruit. And it's because the root is the wine in this example. And even though we cannot see it, the tree, the tree is still getting the nutrition from the soil. So it is like a person in Christ that we cannot see Christ as the, the same way that we cannot see the root on the, on the plant. But when a person is rooted in Christ, is getting all the nourishment, not by himself, but through Christ. And that is why our lifestyle now changes. You find your desires changes. You don't look out and, and start planning, planning only of what is that you want to buy, but you want to reach. You want to reach out to people. You want to help them. When you see someone sad, you don't avoid that. You want to talk to them. You want to give them an answer. Now our desires change. Our dreams change. We no longer want to live for ourselves. We want to live for Christ. And the third analogy you gave us yesterday was about the birds on the branch. When the birds come and rest and they, they eat and the branch, they also get to poop in there. <laughs> so you, you said, do you see the branch trying to take revenge on the on the birds? The branch instead says, this might be garbage for you, but for me it's manure. You might be giving me poison, but with my agape love, I will convert that poison into manure. So that is so, so, so useful for my own growth. So maybe the birds come and they can make a mess around us, and that mess might even be stinky. But I can still live my life in Christ so that any poison that comes against me does not affect me at all. By using the sap in Christ, I can use the dirt, the dirt that is being thrown to me as a manure for my own growth. So the situations and circumstances are putting pressure on us, and they might look like poison. But when we are grafted in Christ, when we are filled with his sap, you look at the things, not in the natural, but in the spiritual. And now you will respond with a smile in your face. Because now you know that the devil has deceived you in the past by limiting your vision, always looking at the present situation, not allowing you to look further and not allow you to proclaim the unseen but now with the eyes of the spirit i'm so enlightened that i can see with the spiritual eyes using the instrument that is the bible the word of god and i can see impossible things made into possible through the word of god so look out at the tree again, you said, you asked to Marina yesterday and you, and you asked her, can you see that uh, there might be maybe some ants climbing, some bees trying to build their honeycomb? And Marina said, yes. And you said, that's because many creatures can, can live together in peace in the same branch, but the branch does not threaten them, but allows them to build their home in, in, in the branch, in the tree. The branch says that you don't know, you cannot hurt me. You cannot hurt me because I am connected to the true wine that supplies me with the true sap. And I can, even though you're, you're might be hurting me or trying to hurt me, I can show you, this is my opportunity to show you with my love, the glory of God. Uh, this is my opportunity to show that the glory of God in my life is so beautiful that I will still produce fruit even through this unfavorable environment. 
trees, leaves happily next to each other. Sometimes pretty much they're not the same kind of tree and they're not going through the same stage or maturity. But they don't try to fight with each other. So the question that Brother Johnson asked yesterday to us is like, but what about us? Every time that we face an unfavorable situation, unfavorable situation, we want to fly to a new location. Every time that a crisis comes, instead of facing it and being connected, having faith that we're connected to that sap and taking that test into testimony, we want to flee from that place, from that test to a new location. So there was a question in the, sh in the chat yesterday that was answered as well. It says, uh, does the Bible permit grafting of two different varieties? And this is where you, Brother Johnson, said that it's not the different varieties, but we're talking about the same variety in Christ Jesus. But we're producing maybe different types of fruits, producing different faces of the same fruit that is called love. So Joe Fernandez answered himself yesterday, and he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. This is on Galatians. 3.28, sorry, uh, Sister Marina, Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all in Christ Jesus. And then you also gave us a parable of a fig tree planted in the, in the vine yard. And this is where uh, Luke 13, 6 onwards. And Jesus was talking about being the true vine, the true wine, the true vine, and that his father is the gardener. But Jesus is, only, is also saying that we not only look at the vine, but sometimes the ground is also important. So he gave the, far, the parable of a fig tree that was planted on purpose in a vine yard. And you said yesterday, we don't usually plant fig trees on a vine yard because we know it will be surrounded by creepers. So this fig tree never got the chance to produce fruit. And when the lawn owner came and said to the gardener, cut it off. I've been coming for three years, I believe it says the scripture, and I never seen fruit on that on that fig tree. And the gardener said, just give me an opportunity. Give me one more year. I will dig it out and dunk it. I will do my part so it produces fruit. And then the question was here, what was the intention of planting this fig tree in a vine yard? And this is a message that was given to us yesterday. Just because I'm planted in the wrong place, in my own thinking, it does not mean that the character of the fig tree will change into of the wines. The fig tree was under so much pressure. The very purpose of being planted there was to produce fruit, but it lost its original purpose. And I see in, and I'm saying today that this is a message given to us because right now, many of us are no longer living in our native land. And we thought at some point we might have come through an experience and thought, well, this is because I'm in the wrong place. Again, what Brother Johnson said yesterday, when you go through a crisis, don't flee from, this, from the situation. Just because I'm planted right now here, it does not mean that I need to change the character of who I am in Christ Jesus does not give me an excuse to not produce fruit, to lose my original purpose. So the desire of this for this fig tree was to produce seed bearing fruit. So when the fruits came, they could be used to grow more trees. And this tree was under pressure because it was supposed to grow fruits quickly for the seeds to produce more trees. 
In the same way, we are those fig trees planting in the vineyard of the world that is in darkness right now. And we live in this world who have lost, and sometimes living in this world, we have lost our connection. And by losing our connection, now we start producing fruit. So the question that the Lord was asking yesterday to us, are you going to go back to the source? Come back to me so that you can receive the sap from the source and start producing again the fruit, the real you. So Brother Johnson gave us yesterday the example of when GCLM soon classes started. And it was maybe on the most unfavorable situation for everyone around the world because people had lost their jobs. We have no security. We were under so much pressure and so much fear. And the Bible classes started along the whole day. And the intention was to be there available because Brother Johnson knew the devil had struck with so much worry, fear, and anxiety that that fear was so powerful that it was causing nearly death. And we're not talking just physical death, but spiritual. And that was the time when the Lord gave Brother Johnson this vineyard called Soon. But Brother Johnson said to us yesterday, in the same way, please understand, the Lord is giving to each one this opportunity, this opportunity of being a vineyard. We're now the true vineyard of God. He has given us this vineyard where we can produce fruit. You are the one who is supposed, supposed to bear fruit now for God. In the same way yesterday, Brother Johnson reminded us of Israel, who was a vineyard of God that was supposed to produce fruit for the whole mankind to receive salvation. So again, Pay attention because this is what we're being called to. Israel was the vineyard of God that was supposed to produce fruit for the whole mankind to receive salvation. It's the same message that we just heard before. The Lord is saying that now we are the vineyard to produce fruit so that others can taste himself. Others can, stay, can taste God through that fruit. And the example that was given to us yesterday about Israel was important because they rejected, they rejected carrying that plan of God and they did not bring forth the fruit. So Saul, for example, who was a Pharisee, was well-educated and had everything, but he persecuted the church believing that this new church that was being created by being connected to the new sap were sects. And those new groups will destroy the true knowledge of Judaism. And that brought the fruit of violence and vengeance. So he, he did not brew the fruit that God desired. But Jesus came to encounter Paul. And when Paul ex experienced for the first time ever Christ, he said he, be, he began to realize that anything that he had in the past was considered to be dung. So now the same person changed. And it's the same that Brother Johnson just told us. You could have been a prostitute in the past. You could have been a killer in the past. But when you come into an encounter with Jesus Christ, now you change. You get born again. And you can start proclaiming that Jesus is your Lord, your source, and salvation. And now for the first time, we find ourselves grafted into Christ Jesus. And not, I'm no longer trying to do whatever I want to do by my own. Now the Lord is the one who is giving me this privilege to know him. And he wants me to know him in such a close relationship that you're now God's vineyard. Bringing forth the fruit for him and through him. So today the Lord is saying he's not only calling you, but he's choosing you. He's saying, I'm the true vine, and my father is the, now the gardener. 
the garden is keeping a watch over us. Saul was a Pharisee with authority, but when he found Christ, he gave up everything. Jesus is telling us, be careful because people is going to try to teach you authority in a different way. But the true, the true owner of this vineyard, the one that is a real authority is my father, who is the gardener. And once that we understand that our father is the real gardener, he's the one in authority and he's the one who cares more for us because he wants to see the vineyard to bloom. Now you tell the father, father, I give my whole life to you. Go ahead and prune me as much as you want. I'm ready. I trust you because you're the true gardener. I know you will prove me, prune me in such a way that I produce the most excellent fruit. And the day you begin to realize that you are the vineyard and you got the fruit, you got the seed, you got to go out and give that fruit for others to eat it. So inside of that fruit, there will be a seed. When people taste that fruit, they will recognize this is not a normal fruit. And they will get the seed and the seed will begin to sprout. And now around you, there's several trees growing. And now we are the representative of Christ because everything was in darkness. Everything was around us might be, be unbelievers. But by sharing that fruit that we're producing by being connected to the sap now we're changing that situation and turning our places into a place of believers the last example that bro johnson gave us yesterday was when he came and he talked to father josh and he said that he wanted to come to do the ministry full time and father josh told him you gotta go and find a job because if you're not producing the fruit, meaning you're not providing to your family, then you have rejected the faith. And you might be seen worse than an unbeliever. And, and Brother Johnson said, well, this is an issue now. And it's where we find sometimes ourselves. We don't want to go and work for a, a, a company that is worldly or be around worldly people. I want to work on the vineyard. I don't want to go and, and, and be in a place that I might get lost. But Father Josh said to Brother Johnson, you go to work. You go back to the place where you work. And maybe you don't, not, you don't preach the gospel with the, the prayers and with the, uh, with the scriptures, but you preach the gospel with your actions. And you go and change them all. Again, showing them the fruit. This is our mission. Showing others that are in darkness the fruit. This is our assignment. This is our purpose. And then Brother Johnson said that at some point, at 3 p.m. every day, the factory will shut down for 20 minutes and everyone will come and say the divine mercy prayer. And at the beginning, everyone maybe had felt that it was by force. But not, not long after that, they got to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the transformation of love of God in their own family. And the first day now was history because now everyone came by himself and shot their machine to come and say that div divine mercy prayer. So this is our example. We give in parables yesterday of how is that the cow can share, how is that the vine is is abiding in in the natural law how is that the branches can stand the birds and the trees can stand the the different seasons but if we are connected to the real sap then we're called to be that vine jar of our father who is the the owner of the of the vine jar who is pruning us for us to produce excellent fruit so that when people come and see us, even though we're not sharing with them the scriptures, they get to see the fruits, the fruits of patience, love, joy, understanding, resisting temptation. And now we're preaching where our actions 
and they come and want to know how is it that or where is that you're getting this fruit from. This is our opportunity. The Lord was clear to us yesterday saying, now you are the vine yard. Do not be like Israel who rejected my plan because I am choosing you to be the example for the whole mankind to receive salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.